Texans. Anthony Richardson starts out hot, 6 for 10 for 56 yards, plus two rushing touchdowns, but ends up leaving the game. Gardner Minshew comes in, only four incompletions along the way. Minshew plays a good, solid game. And the Colts, with their first win of the season, Texans fall to 0-2. Yeah, a uh, very conclusive win as well for Indianapolis. Like this game, they got out to an early lead. They got it fairly well under control at halftime. Minshew looked good, never let it in danger being, uh, of slipping away. And so much of the production, the yardage totals, you know, that the, the Houston had came late in the game when they're just constantly trying to peg back something. Um, just a, a bummer for the Colts for Anthony Richardson. I mean, he was looking very good to start the game. The kind of plays you expect him to make. One was, uh, you know, one of his touchdowns was just the kind of usual standard Anthony Richardson rushing play, but then they started getting creative with the running. The, the second touchdown, you know, a bit of a kind of trick, like a fake end around, and then Richardson bails back out the other side, ends up with a fairly comfortable, not quite a walk-in touchdown, but pretty much, then gets, you know, a shot as he goes over the goal line, and it's one of those head bounces off the turf backwards type of deals and out for concussion. So, you know, we don't know if he'll be back next week. I mean, the good news for the Colts was Gardner Minshew came in and showed why Gardner Minshew is one of the best backup quarterbacks in the NFL, which is, you know, there's that gray line between good backup quarterback and marginal starting quarterback, and those guys can win games, can play particularly well, can look good, and Minshew not just steadied the ship, but did a a good job of maintaining everything that Richardson had already built early in the game. Yeah, the other thing to add, I think, for the Colts, Zach Moss comes in, runs really, really well. Uh, last week, they struggled with Deion Jackson running the ball. So, of course, the Jonathan Taylor saga and you know him being out at least for the first four weeks. Zach Moss looked good, man. Seven force missed tackles. And we always talk about when you have that running quarterback and you combine it with a tough-to-tackle running back, it does make the offense that much better. I think Zach Moss added that. And the other thing to highlight, too, that we all kept talking about during the preseason was the Colts' offensive line. I think they've been, yeah. as we've expected at least, Sam, uh, very solid up front from a run blocking and pass blocking in particular uh, from that standpoint. And just to you know put a bow on the Richardson discussion, another week where he you know did the same stuff as far as you know going through reads, you know, throwing to the right person uh, for the most part. Accuracy wasn't, you know, perfect again, but he's, he, he does look very comfortable, I think, as far as running the offense. And as you mentioned, few new wrinkles coming with the run game. And, uh, yeah, hope Richardson's back because we're starting to see what that Colts offense is capable of. Yeah, he's really um, personifying that discussion that we had at draft time, which is he is not raw. He's inexperienced. He hasn't seen it all. Like, he, he just needs reps, but he isn't – This crazy, like right now, Anthony Richardson looks less raw than Justin Fields, who's been in the NFL for three years. Like there, he's further along in terms of quarterbacking development than a guy like Fields is, um, despite the fact that he's so little experience. So the discussion around Richardson, I think, was always largely not everywhere. A lot of people had this right, but there were a lot of people that had just the cliched version of what Anthony Richardson should be given that he's barely started any games in their minds and he isn't that guy and he's showing that already um the other thing to note about Zach Moss by the way not just came in played well all that kind of stuff he almost didn't leave the field um no other running back got snaps the only time he was off the field for one snap like the offensive line and Alec Pierce all played every single snap of the game, which for them was 56 snaps on offense. Zach Moss and Michael Pittman played 55. So he he was not on the field for one offensive snap, and no other running backs got snapped. So in this world of, well, who's going to get, you know, the workload? Who's going to be a a by-committee kind of guy? I mean, Zach Moss this week almost literally did not leave the field for them. And you just you just never know when you could predict that. You have no idea when that's that's how uh, a team is going to roll as far as usage goes. On the other side, the Houston Texans, you know, C.J. Stroud has now dropped back 116 times. So it's almost 60 times per game, 58 per game over the last two weeks. That's total attempts and sacks and all that. Um, That's a ton. And obviously, game flow is a huge part of it. Does feel like Houston's got to get back some semblance. I don't want to say the word balance, but certainly need to 
uh, even things out a little bit where they're not just playing from behind, putting that much on C.J. Stroud. And I want to say Stroud's, again, similar maybe to what we expected. Some of his in-rhythm throws, when it's there, just fantastic. Looks very good. It's anything outside of uh, structure, outside of rhythm that, you know, is a bit of a question mark for Stroud so far. Yeah, I mean, given the situation, i.e. they were down for most of this game and he had to kind of do it by himself, you know, they, they couldn't, it, it was going to slant towards that direction of, you know, pass heavy game script, got away from them type of thing. Um, I thought he looked pretty good, actually, like way better than he did in his debut. Um, the biggest problem was sacks, pocket awareness, all that kind of stuff looped together. It wasn't helped by the fact that his offensive line isn't as good as the, the one for the Colts. Um, he's going to have, I think, a turnover-worthy play in there as well. It's the fumble, which I think is that's kind of harsh, but you, you know, once the pocket is collapsing on him, it's on him to make sure that ball is protected. But it was the second guy coming in that literally just punched it straight out. So, you know, maybe that gets taken off him, but I think that it'll stay. Either way, like that's the one glaring negative from his tape in almost 400 yards worth of production from a game script that was away from him very, very early in the game. I think that was a quite an impressive sophomore game for a. Uh, for uh, C.J. Stroud. Nico Collins was his top target, seven catches for 146. I, I couldn't tell the touchdown, um, which was a nice play by C.J. Stroud, getting out of the pocket, and um, th he throws the ball up. It looks like Nico almost intercepted it, yeah. pass intended for someone else. I think it's completed either way, but yeah, Nico Collins with a huge game, nice catch and run for a long gain as well. And your boy, Tank Dell, Gets into the end zone late. That's right. That's right. Look, I, I, excuse yeah, me. Game None flow wise, we don't want Houston. I, I don't think they want to play like this. But with Nico Collins, Robert Woods, get more Tank Dell in there. It's not a bad receiving core the way they've been playing. Don't give me this. Nico Collins is his top target crap. Ten targets for Tank Dell. Nine targets for Nico <laughs> Collins. Sure, Nico's went for more yardage. You know, but whatever. Top target, the most targeted receiver. That was Tank Dell. Yeah, you're uh, you're justified there, Sam. Mm -hmm. um, Will, Will Anderson with a huge, like a the very first pass of the game, quick win against Braden Smith at right tackle, and then not much else after that. I was like, wow, Will Anderson looking great right off the bat. Didn't uh, create a ton of pressure again. Going back to that Colts offensive line, looking yeah. really good through two weeks, and see, uh, uh, not what they were last year with all those injuries. No, I mean, again, this is so we're we're two weeks in. Some things we were saying all off season are going to be quite clearly true already some things are going to be quite clearly wrong already that feels like one that's going to be true from the outset that that offensive line for indianapolis had no business being as bad as it was last year and it was almost certainly destined for some kind of rebound now did you also see the uh, the flash of will mallory skills tight end for the colts yeah only 10 snaps but yeah got in there made Tell some everybody plays. about it let's go i'm just saying will will mallory flashing Man's Are we back ability. here? You're just gonna you're just gonna call out everything that mm -hmm. players that you like did. Yeah, absolutely.